Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to compare Terramaster and Synology this is not the first time I've compared these two brands but it has to be said that this is the first time I've compared them when their solutions are like two years apart generally on this channel when I do compare NASs let's face it it's in the name of the bloody channel when I compare them I try to abide by some kind of internal rules I'll make sure that I compare two things of a similar caliber in terms of hardware I'll compare two devices that have been released relatively similar timing to each other and therefore buyers are trying to compare between them or sometimes I'll compare two devices because I think the, whether they are similar or not people will be weighing up the decision nonetheless and even if it breaks the other two rules that third one's the most important in the back of my mind because these comparisons are built on what people ask for. Now the reason I'm comparing these two devices despite the fact that the Terramaster has been released incredibly recently and the Synology is over two years old at the time of recording. The reason I'm comparing them is regardless of that fact, the newer Terramaster is knocking around on the market noticeably cheaper. Okay, so if we get the price tag there on screen, let's face it, if you're comparing these two devices, you've probably come to this video because you're helping someone will explain to you why they're so different in price. The Terramaster knocks around for about $499, that's with tax, or 439 quid um, in UK money. Now, the Synology here, the DS920 there, this knocks around for about $550, even as high as $599 when you shop online. It does appear in, you know, primed and Black Friday and your seasonal sales because it's been in the market for a couple of years but it still costs more money and indeed in pounds you're still looking at you know a little over 500 quid so how comes this device two years older still costs more than the F4 423 released in 2022 and that's kind of the big thing in today's video because although we're comparing these two NASs a lot of you are coming to it with that frame of mind you want to know why there's a price difference maybe it's the first time you're hearing about these two brands maybe this is your first NAS and you followed the subject for a while but you still don't quite understand why the price difference exists and whether you actually need to spend that extra bit of money so in today's video we're going to be comparing the 920 versus the 423 and we're going to be comparing them in a number of ways we're going to be looking at the internal hardware we're going to be looking at the storage capabilities both on day one and day 1000 between these two devices we're going to be looking at the ports and connections of the pair of them and we're going to talk about the software of course and hopefully at the end of this we'll understand two things one we'll understand the concept of value for money depending on what you want for your money and the second thing we want to kind of dig out of this is which one is best suited to your needs because not everyone's different you know and everyone's the same we're all different and what we want from our technology can differ from person to person to person to person so let's crack on now the internal hardware on these two NASs is weirdly similar and weirdly different at the same time I know I know I know conflict but hear me out now the older of the two the Synology arrives with the Intel J4125 it's an Intel Celeron processor it's quad core at 2.0 gigahertz that can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz it's got on board graphics and it arrives with 4 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig now those are pretty reasonable things. You've got a AES-NI encryption. You've got yourself transcoding there for your multimedia, your 4K, your 1080. And of course, that embedded graphics is great for handling multimedia capabilities and graphical data and things like virtualization and surveillance. Now, in the 423, this 4Bay from Terramaster, You've got a newer generation Intel Celeron. It's the next generation up, the N5105. That CPU, again, quad core, again, 2.0 gigahertz, but it can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz per core it's got the aes ni encryption it's got a higher degree of embedded graphics on board it also arrives with 4 gig of ddr4 memory as well but it can be upgraded up to 32 gig of memory which is significantly higher now there's good news and bad news on the subject of memory and i think we should really kind of sit on this one a little bit longer so in terms of that memory, as mentioned, 4 gig inside this system. It's 2,666 megahertz memory that's soldered to the board. You can't remove it. You can add another further 4 gig of memory, but that 4 gig has to be Synology memory if you want to live within the support structure of Synology completely. Now, 
That their four gig memory is quite expensive, it has to be said, more so than if you bought off the shelf Crucial, Samsung, Time Tech, Kingston, any of those brands. But if you do use those, then Synology do state that if that memory causes issues with the system, they won't support you on your warranty there, or you give you are able to give you support long term. As well as that, a lot of users have reported that on the DSM platform, you get a little warning at the top telling you you are using unsupported memory. So, again, not great news. Um, and with the TerraMaster, it arrives with slower memory by default. It arrives with 4 gig of 2,133 megahertz memory. So again, around about you know 500 megahertz difference there in performance speed but it can be upgraded there over two slots to hit that um, 32 gig maximum i hate seagulls now as good as that sounds it's worth touching on that the cpu inside this system intel state that that cpu can only go as high as 16 gig so TerraMaster saying it can go as high as 32 is a slight pause for thought there. Now, it's not impossible. We've done lots of tests here on this channel where we've put in more memory than the recommended maximum from the CPU manufacturer. But a lot of the time, the reason they give those is for reasons potentially of stability or in terms of utilizing each of the cores. And in some cases, there's just simply no means for the CPU to handle bigger blocks of memory than that. Now, we're still investigating more about the CPU inside uh, the TerraMaster because it's being used in more and more NASes right now from Acer Store to QNAP as well. And potentially, we don't know, it might still arrive on a new Synology. But still, it's more memory and flexible upgrades in allowing you to use all of the memory uh, brands without it affecting your support or warranty. So again, uh, Samsung, Kingston, TimeTech, you name it, you can use it. So again there's a flexibility to that memory but it's a slower performing memory by base level so you will have to remove that and go for fast ones it supports up to 3200 memory but bear in mind again that that 32 gig sounds mm, i'm not too sure about it. it still supports 16 which is great news it has to be said and it's still larger than the 8 gig on the synology with a larger amount of flexibility but again, that is something, you know, your hand isn't held as much. It's a better CPU and better options for that memory and more flexibility. So in terms of internal CPU and memory architecture, the TerraMaster is winning it. So again, we've got that big price difference there. But, you know, why is the TerraMaster still cheaper? Let's dig a little deeper, shall we? So next we'll talk about storage between the two of them. They're both four base systems they both allow you to take advantage of wd reds and sega iron wolf hard drives and they both support the very latest hard drives although both of their respective compatibility lists have not yet added 20 tbs we've tested it in the background with some wd red pro 20 tbs and both of these were able to see and utilize those drives in storage pools and volumes they both arrive along with those four bays of storage with uh, m2 nvme bays now in the case of the synology the m2 nvme bays can only be used for caching. Very useful caching, it has to be said. Read and write caching. But you can't use them for more than that. Whereas in the TerraMaster, you can use them for caching, but you can also use them for raw storage. They are limited to PCIe Gen 3 times one so a 1,000 megs per SSD bay, which will bottleneck some drives, such as the Seagate Ironwolf series, but still nonetheless, the ability to use them as a raw storage pool or caching is going to be hugely beneficial. And... Both of these systems support both EXT4 and BTRFS. So again, both of them having very similar of throughput uh, and options available to you with your storage. On top of that, they both, in a way, arrive with support of flexible RAID. Now, Synology, for a long time, has held the high ground with SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, the ability to mix and match hard drive uh, sizes. So you can have a full complement, for example, of 4TB drives, and a few years down the line, you want to start adding some bigger drives. You can remove two, chuck in a couple of 10TBs, and SHR will allow you to take advantage of the bulk of that larger capacity. In a traditional RAID, you wouldn't be able to do that. It would class every drive as the smallest available drive in the array. SHR and Synology has that flexibility. Now, at the time of recording, TOS4 does not have flexible RAID. So you, it only has the traditional RAID options available. However, TOS5 has the T-RAID. And T-RAID is a flexible RAID. Much like SHR, 
you can mix and match the drives. You can add larger capacities. Now, TOS 5 is in beta at the time of recording, and we're going to refer back to TOS 5 at the end of the video, but having that flexible RAID option down the line might be beneficial to you if you're watching this in the future and TOS has been fully released or as, as an RC. Um, and now, we can talk about expansions. Both of these systems support expandability, the ability to add storage enclosures to add more storage with more bays. Now, in the case of the Synology, you can only use their expansions. In the case of this bay, in the 920, you use the DX517, a five bay expansion, hence the nine in the 920 title. Your four bays inside, and you can add five more bays of storage. That five bay expansion, the DX517, knocks around for between 350 and 450 pounds, depending on where you are in the world and currency conversions. It's a JBOD that takes advantage of eSATA, so six gigabit connectivity, and allows you to add that storage. You can either spread the RAID across both systems, the expansion and the NAS, or have it as parallel storage. Now, TerraMaster doesn't have USB expansion, uh, have an official expansion, but it does allow you to attach USB JBOD boxes and use those as expansions with the RAID being handled by the system. Again, we have more success doing it in TOS 5, so something for the future, but we are able to connect a 10 bay expansion chassis over USB 3.2 Gen 2, something else we'll talk about later, to this device. Now, this expansion knocks around for between 499 to 599. It's a 10 bay expansion. But you can get two, four, and five bay JBOD expansions for as little as $200. Again, you can get hardware RAID ones that will be supported, but still nonetheless, that is a tremendous amount of flexibility on this system in terms of how you can expand it. It would be nice to have an official expansion, and they don't really make any recommendations of what expansion you should go for, but still nonetheless, that is a great boom for TerraMaster's TOS 5 platform there. So again, in terms of storage, they've both got BTRFS, they've both got four bays of storage, they can both be expanded, but the TerraMaster has more flexibility in its expansion, and they've both got M2 NVMe slots, but whereas the Synology can only use them for caching, the TerraMaster can use them for both caching and a raw storage pool. But yet, the TerraMaster is lower in price. Weird. Okay, so let's make our way on to our next section, ports and connections. We turn the device around, we can look at what these two systems provide in terms of connectivity. Now, once again, we'll start with the Synology. And the Synology there, we've got those two rear cooling fans down. We've got the two M2 bays there on the base. On the rear, we've got a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, so 5 gigabits per second. There's also one front mounted there on the front with a copy button. Um, and then on the rear, we have got two Ethernet ports, one gigabit Ethernet ports. There's an eSATA for the expansion as mentioned, but each of those Ethernet ports can give you around 100 to 109 megabytes per second network connectivity. You can combine them with link aggregation to hit a little over two gigabit Ethernet there. So that's great. Two to 218, 220 megabytes per second there connectivity with a smart switch. So in terms of connectivity, well, fair and well, it came out in 2020. The TerraMaster, on the other hand, arrives with two USB ports, but these are USB 3.2 Gen 2. So these are 10 gigabit or 1,000 megabytes per second there. They can be used for expansions. They can also be used for 2.5 to USB um, uh, adapters to allow you to add 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and 5 gigabit Ethernet with 5 GBE to USB adapters. On top of that, there's two LAN ports there on the bottom, but those LAN ports are 2.5 GBE each. So those 2.5 GBE ports there, that means each one of those can give you between 250 and 279 each, and you can combine them with a smart switch that supports 2.5 GBE to hit 500 to 550 megabytes per second there. That is an enormous jump in terms of network connectivity that this system can achieve. On top of that, there's an HDMI port there at the top, but it's not really usable for anything on this system other than standard code access and debug. So we're not really gonna count that in today's video, but still nonetheless, faster USB ports, faster network ports, but this system still costs less why? It's getting weird now, right? And of course, we can talk about design, of course, and I think 
No one watching this video would disagree with me if I said that the Synology is certainly the better looking NAS between the two of them. Let's look at it there. Look at the Synology there. They're both, you know, standard four bay chassis there. I think the Synology is a little bit more modernistic, more work's gone into the design. It's not as wide as the Terramaster. We've got ventilation there on the side. It's a compact framework there, cooling vents underneath, the lockable trays there on the front. In the case of the Terramaster, and I'll be honest, I hold those for longer than I thought I'd be able to. On the front, it's a bit wide. There's no cooling there on the side. There's a big amount of ventilation. It's the noisier operational device of the two. You've got the two fans. It's got the click and load trays there on the front. But it's not, you know, it's not terrible. It's a little bit dated looking. It's a little bit, you know, plastic fantastic. But we say that, but this has a metal external chassis. This is all plastic. And metal, correct me if I'm wrong, costs more than plastic. So... Yes, the design is certainly better, in my opinion, on the Synology, and the ventilation on the logos on the side is very nice as well. But between the two of them, um, although the Synology is better, the Terramaster isn't terrible. It's not hideous. It's just a, a little bit dated looking. They've been sticking with this chassis for a while. Hell, Synology have stuck with their chassis for a long time as well. They've stuck with their chassis, and although they've modified it a little bit with each generation, this chassis has existed since about 2017. A lot of their two-bay chassis have only had small modifications in the last 10 to 12 years. So it's not a crime to stick with a chassis for a long amount of time. So again, although the design's better on the Synology, it still doesn't really justify that price tag. So why? Why is the Terramaster cheaper than the Synology, even though the Synology is two years older? the software and that's basically the big thing here because between these two systems dsm still rules the roost it is by a country mile the best nas software in the world i would say and yes you can talk to me about top tier elite stuff and you're right if you've got an in-house admin it's borderline limitless what you can do but still nonetheless disk station manager or dsm currently in version 7.1 the sheer range of first party services, the intuitive nature of the amount of work that's gone into the user experience, the ease of use, the ease of deployment, all of the collaboration suite applications, all of the business apps, all of the backup applications, it is just, just it's chalk and cheese. TOS is good, and TOS 4, it's, it does a, few, a handful of things very well, but I think in terms of software, the Synology platform feels more intuitive, it feels smoother, and ultimately the mobile applications, it's so much more first party. Now, Terramaster are doing more. TOS 5, currently in beta, their latest version, brings a lot more applications. It's a lot more responsive, it feels a lot more secure as well. It brings a lot more features and services as well to the table. And although it doesn't close the gap between DSM and TOS, I would say that their latest version, if you try out the beta, it brings a lot to the party. A new surveillance application to add more cameras without the licensing. It also brings in as well the idea that you can use AI photo um, recognition. Um, and again, that AI powered photo recognition, although it's available on Synology Photos, you can recognize more things there on TOS 5. It has isolation mode. It has a lot of more security features built in, and we will talk about security in a moment. But TOS 5 is still not DSM. And if you needed to point at something that shows you the price difference between them, that's it. The big price difference is DSM. It just brings so much to the party. And again, you might not think you need it. You might think I know enough about IT. You might think, you know, I know my way around. I don't mind spending a little bit more time. I know how much my time is worth. But honestly, before you purchase either of these two, take the time to use the free online demos that they both offer online to try out their softwares. And just know what you're getting into first. Because the Terramaster software, it will take a little bit more time to set up. It takes a little bit more time to use. It does the job. And TOS 5, when it arrives, changes a lot of things. And I do genuinely like it. But still... DSM is where that money is. Now, I said I'd touch on security, and here at the end of the video, we need to address the elephant in the room, ransomware. Pretty much all of the NAS brands at the moment have been attacked by ransomware in one shape or form. Security issues, 
you know, are things that are always going to impact any brand, particularly any brand where its product is connected to the internet. And I'm including Google, I'm including Apple, I'm including everyone. Every day you can go to a security advisory page for any brand and you will find that they are highlighting vulnerabilities found in their programs and then they sew them up with patch updates. Both of these brands arrive with regular patch updates between them. So again, no one is infallible. However, when it comes to ransomware, Terramaster has been hit by Deadbolt in the last 12 months. I believe it was January at the start of this year, along with Store, along with QNAP. They weren't alone in this. The um, attackers, uh, the Deadbolt group, clearly understood what they were doing and they targeted certain brands. All of the brands have since patched those vulnerabilities, but still nonetheless, people have long memories. And going along with that, Synology's not been hit by a, a successful widespread ransomware or malware campaign since 2014. And that was a Sino Locker. And that was a long time ago. And they certainly learned their lumps from that. So no one's infallible, but it would have to be highlighted that Terramaster were hit by ransomware this year. Now, they again, all sewn up. And a lot of vulnerabilities existed in old versions. Some of it related to Linux. Some people arguing that a lot of the DLNA security settings were not as tight as they should have been. Or that users were given way too much control to change things they shouldn't have been able to have without first understanding the weight of their decisions. But it had to be touched on here. But again... If you are considering these two devices, understand where that price difference is coming from. Understand what you're buying. Whether you care about hardware or software, that price difference is important and actually means something. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I've not really fallen directly on the side of one or the other because I think there are user groups for both of these devices. But I hope there are elements from this video that you have taken that have helped you to be informed on your decision between them. If you have enjoyed this video, chuck me a like. Ever since YouTube took away the dislike button, YouTubers aren't happy about it either. We want the dislike button. It helps us understand what we're doing right and wrong. And although you could click dislike and I'll see it, because no one else can see it, people aren't clicking it. So click like if you've enjoyed it, because it helps us understand. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. We make a video every day, and we cover everything in the world of data storage. From NAS to DAS to Thunderbolt to SSDs to hard drives, you name it, we cover it. And there's the free advice section over on NAS Compares. Check it out. Use it if you need it. It's free. There's donate buttons. Use them, ignore them. It's up to you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.